Can you talk a little bit more about the connection between fluoride and cancer? That's something I, we didn't talk that much about, but are there studies, research that, that show a definite link between the two? There are lots of, lots of studies showing a definite link between the two, and the one I like to point to is called the National Toxicological Program. This is the government program that they fed the animals uh, you know, a fluoride-free diet, and then they uh, gave them various levels of fluoride. And the lowest level they gave, the rats got a little cancer. And the middle level, they got a middle level of cancer. And the highest level, they got more cancer. Nice linear relationship yeah. like that. And then the U.S. Public Health Service took that study and they changed every single cancer. Boy, if I ever got cancer, I'd sure like to have them take it because they could take a pencil and just put an eraser on it. They, oh, there you go. Your cancer <laughs> went away. So those rats became the most healthy rats in the world. But if you look at a picture of them, they look like they got run over with a semi-trailer truck. That study still exists. There's no reason why scientists should not be required to sit and take the slides and score the cancers in a blinded fashion. You will find those rats got a very rare form of liver cancer called hepatoangiocholangioma. That single cancer alone is enough to knock fluoride out of all food products and water because it's significant. That means that that cancer is so rare that the fact that it showed up in that study at all means that, and not in the controls, just that study, that means that fluoride is a carcinogen. That cancer alone, but they also got bone cancer. They, they had so much bone cancer, they had to take the largest bone cancer and throw it out. Oh, that bone cancer is so big, it obviously would have killed the animal, so it couldn't possibly be a bone cancer. Sure looks like a bone cancer, but we're going to throw it out anyway because we are the public health service, and we have a whole division that promotes fluoridation, and so it would impair their program of fluoridation. So we have bureaucrats protecting programs instead of protecting American citizens, civilians, people who do not need fluoride. You were talking about prescription fluoride. That interesting to learn that uh, one of the things in the movie, Jeff Green points out, the congressional investigation, fluoride's never been approved in a prescription form. So. When you actually subject this mm. to studies, it doesn't, they said there was no evidence of benefit. So they rejected applications for fluoride drops and tablets and fluoride vitamins. And so if that's rejected, how come they're still on the market? Oh, we, they're protecting the fluoridation program because if they made them take it off the market, then people would say, well, if you can't get it in prescription form. So they have unapproved drugs on the market. But be aware, a drug requires three things. In order to prescribe it, the doctor has to see you. I can't just write a prescription and send it out into the internet. Sure. You have to see the patient. You have to determine what drug that patient needs and what level they need and give them informed consent. So that's step two. We've skipped step one and two with this thing that you'd like to call a drug, but it's really a drug that's unapproved and ineffective. And so Inform, and then you also have to track the drug. And so those three things have never happened. And so when people want to call fluoride a drug, yes, the FDA called it a drug. And it, they called it unapproved. So we have products on the market that need to be removed from the marketplace. Say, mm. I got another way to balance the budget. All those people that are supposed to be regulating drugs that don't bother to regulate deadly poisons put in vitamins, I think we could, or a clean house, what do you think? Mm -hmm.